Yes. Come on, Mark, you can do it. <laughs> hey, there you are. There are. he is. All right. We are close. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We're just uh, getting ready to start here in a couple of minutes, just doing a couple last minute cleanup items. And yes, Mark, I will hit the record button. <laughs> All right. Well, I show one o'clock. Anybody think differently? All yes, right. Sir. Get Good. it going. Silence is golden. So, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Chris Ownmaker, Bullseye Telecom, Vice President of Corporate Accounts. You are joining our happy half hour, which is today, the August 27th, hard to believe. And today we're gonna to be talking about some more pots to VoIP here and strategies, things to think about, what's coming from Washington, some success stories and some kind of really cool instruments that Bullseye has in place today. Um, I do wanna encourage that we, we've done these for about, uh, about five months now. So we have a little bit of an inventory talking about security and penetration testing. We've got broadband, we've got uh, talking about IOT, we've got uh, a lot of different topics that we've saved on our public website, bullseyetelecom.com. And all those videos are, are archived over there. You guys can take a look at those at any time you want. Uh, we also do have uh, a pretty good uh, LinkedIn profile going. We're not doing just bullseye commercial stuff. We are trying to share what's going on in the industry. We're trying to share some success stories. We're trying to talk about what's relevant in regards to communications and security. Um, encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram. And you know we try to do the, the same thing for all of our customers, trying to find out what's what in the world, what, uh, what's going on, not just COVID related, but anything else. But uh, I encourage you to give us a look there uh, on LinkedIn and um, you know see what's going on in the bullseye world. So today, again, we're talking specifically about POTS the VoIP and, and how we can get there. Um, we have with us today, so just uh, raising your hands really quick here, we're gonna kick off with Paul West. Hi, Paul. Hello. So Paul West is our uh, senior product manager, uh, director of product, uh, our senior uh, director of product marketing, excuse me. And Paul's been with us now for how long, Paul? Oh, gosh, like 19 years. Long 19. time. Outstanding. Paul's going to be talking about what's going on in the regulatory front. Um, then we're going to segue. I'm going to be talking a little bit about some tools that we have available to every one of our customers that's on this call. And if... Uh, um, if you're not a customer, we'd be happy to talk to you about that as well. Um, then we're going to move into some of the challenges that come along with that. And Clayton, Clayton Banka. Hi, Clayton. Clayton is our uh, product engineer. Clayton's responsible for bringing new products to the portfolio of Bullseye. He's got some pretty exciting things that he's always working on, the things that blink and blip. And uh, he's going to talk to us a little about some of that stuff there. And then we're going to end up talking with uh, Mark Sundergaard. Mark, how are you? Hello. Hello, uh, Mark's the uh, director of channel sales here at Bullseye, and he's been through a lot of these conversions. We've, uh, you know, we've acquired customers on POTS 15 years ago, and we're converting them. We've acquired customers uh, in the last, you know, year and a half, and with a strategy built into the contract that you're going to convert over time. So, a lot of different strategies that we have to convert. We're going to help uh, help you kind of mold that path here through our dialogue today. So, first off, we're going to kick off with Paul West. So, Paul. Um, you're going to talk to us a little bit about what's going on. You know, we, we've been talking to customers for a very long time about, hey, you guys should do this. You can get some really cool features and functionality, and there's uh, some really good reasons why to go to VoIP. But um, pressing, there's maybe a little bit more uh, reasons to do that, and that's uh, a regulation, you know, aspect. So you want to share a little bit with, uh, with us what's going on, uh, the trends in the industry here? Sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Great, uh, great question there, Chris. Yeah, we've got a lot of activity that's happening. There's a lot going on in the pot space that impacts, you know, from both a pricing perspective as well as a regulatory perspective. I'll try to touch on quickly what a lot of those are. We've, you know, forbearance has come around uh, earlier this year. In February, we had forbearance 
um, that started to have a play in the market. And what that did is it really, it, it required that or made changes to how uh, various CLECs are uh, passing costs on to carriers such as us. And uh, in February, they no longer had to provide discounts on their resale services to us. So that's presented some challenges and that, that has an impact obviously to cost, but forbearance will continue through August of 2022. And there's some continued changes where uh, around that time between now and then, carriers uh, are really not required to offer POTS uh, potentially any longer after that August 2nd date in 2022. So there's a lot of shifting that's happening in the market as a result of that. And, um, you know, additionally, on the wholesale side, from a cost perspective related to what's happening in the market, there's a lot of cost shifts that are happening. Uh, Quest and, and Birch right now are passing through costs to carriers that service in their regions. A lot of wholesale providers that are um, right now renewing contracts with carriers out there who provide services to end use customers that are on a month to month agreement. So price assurity or price assurance is kind of going away uh, over time as these changes happen. Additionally, with regard to the regulatory space, there's additional regulatory reform where the FCC has got proposals on the table to potentially shift all the regulatory charges into the line charge on a move forward basis. We'll see what happens with that. But I mean, really what a lot of this means in the market is that, you know, there's continued volatility with regard to pricing and continued, you know, volatility with regard to regulatory. We've got forbearance playing out through 2022 regulatory reform. Well, it's going to continue. And, uh, you know, um, and USF is another area where, just this past month when Q3 came around, um, the, FCC, uh, the FCC imposed a 26.5% USF. I mean, that's, that's a dramatic shift from where we were in Q2, which was 19.6. That's 26% increase. And that's going to continue as the revenue shifts from POTS to other technologies. All of this has been exacerbated by COVID-19. So, you know, again, Bullseye recommends we plan now and make those changes. Why wait, you know, for this continued volatility to come around? We, you know, we can help customers with that. So we know that, you know, aside from maybe oil and pharma, that uh, communications yeah. are probably the most heavily taxed uh, services that are out there. USF, you mentioned it a little bit about, uh, you know, the increase or what the current the current rates are. Just for a quick getting everybody up to speed, can you kind of explain briefly what USF is and maybe how it's calculated and what it applies to? Right. Yeah, USF is is a... You know, it's a fee that is charged on, uh, you know, long distance services and items which are, are tariffed within an FCC tariff, which would include, uh, you know, any any packages related to long distance or anything that's interstate related. And um, it funds rural um, access to internet services and phone services. So uh, the, the, F, the FCC require, you know, requires carriers bill that on their behalf and pass that through to them. And so again, it changes every quarter and the last quarter it went up dramatically. And a lot of the reason why that is again is because POTS as a rule for them to collect those services is diminishing. And you know, obviously, VoIP and internet services are taking over, and so they have to raise that rate to fill the gap. Yeah, so, I mean, there's so many good points from that is uh, just talking about taxes in general. Broadband, as an example, is not taxed. Um, right now, VoIP services are, the regulatory charges on VoIP services are so minimal right now that it's probably soon going to catch up, you know, in the next five, ten years when the taxes go away from, uh, the POTS lines that are out there that are diminishing that we're going to have to figure out where the, the tax dollars are going to come from and they're probably going to be applied to VoIP later. But right now it's so minimal. So when you get this line rate quote 
for $22 sounds outstanding. Unfortunately, there's $22 and other fees that are out there that are applied to it that uh, many people don't maybe uh, divulge in those initial, you know, quote, quote elements uh, of a proposal. So that's always something to think about. So um, thank you, Paul. We might come back to you here in a moment. Uh, what I wanted to share here is uh, I'm going to drag my uh, screen up here and I would just want to ask really quick uh, from the panel can you guys see my screen here yep can you see our VoIP MBA uh, yep. the portal so available to all of our customers on this little reporting tab right here re request a report you're going to get all these different reports that are available to you at any given time you can have them delivered one time you can have them delivered subscription means once a month but there's this one right here called POTS to VoIP Digital Report. Now this is available to your client relationship manager. Um, so you can get in touch with your account manager, your client relationship manager, but what you're going to get is this, which I'm gonna bring up right now here. And gentlemen, again, can you guys see my Excel sheet here? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes. Awesome, thank you. So what you're gonna get with this is you're gonna get three different tabs. And this is gonna share with you what you're spending today. This is your actual spend. This, these are the locations. Again, we, we referenced the name sample company just to protect the innocent. But here is the total number of POTS lines you have at those locations, the actual minutes that you spent in the last month, um, what those charges were, your overall expense right here. This is the column that you know we're gonna be doing a comparison to. And then what we have over here is if you were to convert to VoIP. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it might be easier to read. But at the end of the day, you're going to see by converting to a hosted phone system, this is a monthly savings, this is an annual savings, and here's a three-year term savings, what you're spending today versus what you could be saving dollars, saving dollars over here. 47.9% savings on this. Now that's assuming that you convert every line. That doesn't always happen. We're going to get into that in one second here. But you know, here's a hosted phone system from Bullseye. Here's an integrated system from Bullseye. So you go from $340,000. Now you're saving $408,000. And then you know, the end of the goal for most companies is to get to a SIP solution where you know maybe there's no handsets at all so look at that five hundred thousand dollars over the three-year term or you know fifteen thousand dollars a month this isn't a really large company this is this is 60 some locations i mean that's not a very large um, enterprise from you know bullseye's normal standpoint of uh, most of our clients but i think i just wanted to share with you guys that this is a tool that's available so that we can share how you are able to save some money going to these new solutions. So um, with that being said, um, Clayton and I just hinted a second ago that there's not always the, the opportunity for us to convert all phones at a, or all POTS lines at a location to a, a VoIP solution until maybe soon. So we've talked about this word POTS in a box. We've talked about um, you know, moving that non-voice traffic over over a, a broadband or a VoIP type of solution. You wanna walk us through a little bit where, uh, where we're going next? Sure, Chris, thank you. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, um, we're, we're very, very good at doing P to V or POTS to VoIP conversions. And one thing that's kind of always happened or can can happen in the event that there are POTS lines being utilized for things other than voice. Um, fax is a no-brainer no for us. We can convert fax over easily, uh, but things like alarm lines, fire panels, ATMs, um, credit card terminals that might still use a dial-up connection that aren't on the internet yet. All of those devices have traditionally been very difficult to convert over to VoIP um, due to latency, timing, other issues that come up. But with our new product, we're going to be able to convert all of those lines over to VoIP and be able to service them and uh, eliminate the copper. So we're really excited about that. Uh, as you mentioned, Chris, it's coming very soon. Uh, we're in what we call a lean launch right now, which means we're testing with a few customers. Uh, but this solution is uh, a fully baked been around for a while we're just learning how 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 to handle it internally and we're going to have it out pretty soon no it's uh it's something that we've been you know discussing for a very long time it's been some challenges with 
customers converting, you know, all of their lines and really get that that um, end of the day net savings that we just showed on that uh, that report there. But um, we're we're super excited about it, and you know, the the testing that's going on right now. If you do have um, a need if you have an interest I'm not saying that we're accepting all all applicants but uh, you know be happy to talk with your you know your client relationship manager your account manager uh, we will be discussing you know what your needs are not only just for those non voice lines but also the voice lines that are out there today but um, you know very encouraging information in regards to what's coming down the pike here so the the next area that we want to talk about was with Mark Sundergaard was you know some success stories we've got you know customers that have uh, geography could be an issue or uh, timing could be an issue there's all sorts of different strategies that could come into play in regards to how we actually do this conversion so uh, mark i'm going to offer it up to you in regards to uh, you know some different uh, examples that are out there perfect thanks chris so <clears throat> you know we we do this on a regular basis of taking people from pots to void and there's a reason that people are doing it with us is because we're able to control both sides of the equation. And I, I'm sure many of you, or at least some of you have been through a uh, VoIP conversion with a VoIP only company. And there's a lot of things that can go sideways during that process. You can get early ports, late ports, uh, name mismatches. There's just a plethora of things that can happen before you get that line officially over to the hosted company. With us, when you bring those lines on as POTS lines, that gives us the ability to work with you, get them cleaned up, make sure that we have everything set the way it needs to be for that conversion. The other thing we're doing is before we actually take those lines and convert them, we're actually rolling trucks out to those facilities and doing a few things. We're you know, we're, we're installing the equipment. Uh, we're, depending on what we're doing, one of the success stories I'll tell you about here in a minute, we, we put in another piece of equipment as another truck roll so we could do some testing. And then we're rolling somebody the day of the, day of the, uh, the uh, port to make sure everything comes up, everything's going well, and we can move on. So with this, I want to talk about, uh, there's a, a national chicken uh, wing firm that, uh, came to us looking for some help. It was actually an RFP and they were, it was an RFP for POTS because they're just trying to save some money and uh, yeah, make the numbers that they're put before them for the year. But one of the things we like to do is, is consult with companies, even if it's an RFP. So we, we begged and got the ability to talk to them for a while and being an RFP, find out what they're really looking for. And they truly wanted to take their locations to a VoIP solution, but didn't know how to do that. They figured they'd get the get the price down on their pots and and keep that for a, for a couple of years until they could figure out the how the how the VoIP solution would work. <clears throat> we started explaining to them about this pots to VoIP conversion solution and how it can be easier for them as an organization and not and because they had a smaller group in their IT department it's not going to put as be as taxing to them as it would be in other companies taking that over. So we did a few different things that we won that business. And the first thing we did, we brought all the POTS lines over. Um, so we got those over and, and uh, started getting those cleaned up. But in the meantime, while we were doing that, we put something we call a virtual tech out at every location. And I'm gonna have Clayton explain that a little bit later, exactly what that does, but I'm gonna give you the 50,000 foot view here. It's a, it's a miniature computer that can test the, test the network. Uh, it can stress test it. It can check and see if you have clean signal going down your, down your WAN. It does a lot of different things that, that allows us to know that things are right. Um, by doing that, we were able to find several quite a few locations that needed some additional help. Maybe they needed a different modem in there, in there because it wasn't uh, passing SIP traffic. Maybe there was a, the, the line wasn't, the, wasn't clean. It could have been, it was too small. It wouldn't accept all the phone calls that would have become, would be coming in. So there was a lot of different things that we did, but what we were able to do is we were able to now know what locations were clean and which ones were 
move the clean ones up to the front of the move process and start getting those moved over while we're fixing these other issues on the backside with the other locations. And the nice thing is because we control both sides of that equation, we have the pots and we have the VoIP, there's not a losing carrier. We're losing to ourselves. So we're able to really control and move that in a very safe environment that even if there would be an issue, we're not necessarily letting go of that and just saying, here you go, good luck. Um, we, we manage that entire situation for you. So we have been, we've done this many times now for small, medium, and very large organizations. And it has been working very, very well. And we get, we get uh, great um, references out of it and very strong reviews on being able to do this because a lot of people have been through this multiple times. Uh, with a, with just a with just a regular hosted provider, so that has uh, that that's been a very very good success story for us on these pots to VoIP conversions. The other thing that we included in this one was we have this Panasonic DEC phone system that we sell, and one of the interesting things about it is a lot of these uh, stores had four or five lines, four or five pots lines. And what this phone system allows us to do is reduce that to one hosted line, but give four call paths through the phone system itself. So if you think about it, you've got these, these restaurants, uh, because it's a wireless deck system, you don't need Cat5, Cat6 drops anywhere for those. That's only back at the main location of, the, of where everything comes in and hooks up to the antenna. You can put these boxes anywhere you want or put the phones anywhere you want. You just have to plug them into the wall. So you don't have that expense. And the, uh, the you get three different kinds of phones you can get. You can have a desk type phone. You can have the same type of phone you walk around your house with. And then they have a ruggedized model of the of the wireless, the one that you walk around with. So, you know, if it's a, the person in the kitchen that's using it for certain things and it's getting, you know, sauces and butter and everything else on it, It'll, it'll last a lot longer. So doing this with that model, we were able to save them money because of that, because we're reducing the lines, but we're also able to help them get into other things that they want to do. We have companies that have done this with us, with this Panasonic that have now put in, uh, uh, yeah, wireless, wireless access points. We have had people do security with us. We've got uh, quite a few of these restaurants and retail putting in IoT devices, and it's all being uh, purchased with that additional funds they have from making this switch over to VoIP in the Panasonic phone system. So, I think that's a. I think those are some pretty good uh, good reasons why you'd want to do any type of conversion from POTS to VoIP with us. So. Clayton, you want to talk a little bit about the uh, virtual tech? Because th th in, in a lot of these moves, that's a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah, sure, Mark. Thank you. Uh, as Mark mentioned, it's a small uh, single board computer. It's about the size of a deck of cards. We deploy this out at a site um, and we utilize it for several things. But first and foremost, it's uh, VoIP preparation. Uh, a lot of carriers have what they call a VRT or a VoIP readiness test. It's usually a link on a website you click and you run and it gives you a report that's all well and good uh, but the thing we have to remember about VRTs is that that's a moment in time that's a snapshot when that test was actually run uh, and a lot of locations have uh, we find have issues at different times of the day uh, broadband's a shared medium on the back end so you know if if a, another business or another um, customer sharing that uh, that broadband node uh, all of a sudden gets busy or starts uh, hammering their circuit you're gonna see you could potentially see degradation so with our virtual tech we can do what's called a trickle test which is where we simulate several VoIP calls over a 24 48 hour period so rather than looking at a very very small window of time we're looking at the entire window of time so it gives us the ability to see times of days when there could be issues. One of the things that it really also helps us with is it gives us empirical data to go back to the carrier with and say, this circuit is not performing correctly. 
if you run a speed test and it's not right or it's not not close to what you should be getting um it, you you call the carrier and say i'm not getting speed um they're they're gonna they're gonna tell you things like reset your modem we'll send a tech out to check the levels blah 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 the data the virtual tech provides covers things well beyond speed latency jitter packet loss the things that cause that circuit to be unhealthy and slow so we can we can provide that empirical data back to the underlying carrier uh, and get resolution much quicker to get that circuit performing in a healthy way yeah and you know i'll add one more thing is that uh, we're we're experiencing some opportunities out there where the work from home right covid's going on so the the customers that are having those customers working from home on their broadband with the kids operating netflix and xbox and going to school now over that same circuit where you know previously you were getting this you know 100 by 10 or whatever it might be is being you know severely degraded um, that device being deployed in the home environment is also able to tell you um, you know which which uh, elements are where the throughput is coming from so that we can't necessarily lock it down i mean we can do that with other solutions that we have but with for a couple bucks a month you can see what um, what type of traffic is coming through where it's coming from and then be able to you know uh, offer some guidance in regards to resolution there um, I, I do want to add also that we uh, we have customers that will want to do a transition that's going to take a long period of time we had a, uh, a happy half hour with a different audience last week where you know it's just been going on for years now for 400 or so sites um, and then we had another customer, this was uh, going back 2018, where in Q1 we converted almost 400 sites in the matter of three and a half to four months. We converted 90% of their locations. The, the balance of the locations were in areas that where we needed to uh, bring in bigger broadband, uh, bigger pipes, which uh, always are, you know, that, that's kind of the, the challenge piece is, is getting that highway paved, getting that broadband out there. So um, I think the message that we wanted to convey here to everybody, uh, you know, with Paul West with you kicking us off was that, you know, there, there could be an end here. It's not eminent. Um, we have a lot of central office, you know, turndowns that are converting over to fiber. Um, you know, uh, last miles coming into endpoint locations is being converted, you know, service disruption. Converting those locations off of the LEX now, it's sooner than later, is going to uh, provide you with just that, you know, talking about Hurricane Laura coming through right now, provide you with that ability to transfer those calls over to another location as soon as possible. Uh, being able to turn on features, turn off features, add voicemails to saying your hours are changing because of COVID opening up, you know, the U.S. Uh, stores and economy a little bit more and more. So there's a, virtually endless features. And now we're talking about pricing, but also the regulatory piece, which Paul kicked off with, was, uh, you know, really trying to do that trifecta of let's have that conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's see where we're at and where we need to go. So, um Paul, I'm going to start with you, then to Clayton, then to Mark. Last thoughts, comments, Paul West? Yeah, I mean, the time is now. Um, let's uh, let's help help you through this, and we're, we're ready and uh, capable of doing so. Awesome. Um, let's go to Clayton, and then Clayton, I might have a question for you, too. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I just echo Paul's sentiments. Um, you know, we, we've got the technology to do this. We've done thousands of them. You know, reach out and uh, let us help you. So one of the questions, you know, Clayton, that came up here, um, let's see here, talk about pots in the box. We talked about that. Um, how, we, how will you be able to bring a alarm line over via an ATA device on site? So the, the pots in a box uh, vendor that we've gone with um, utilizes several types of technology in their device first of all it is an ata um, it accepts both broadband uh, for connectivity but also has an integrated cellular backup for lte as well as a internal battery backup so when everything's hunky-dory the power's on the broadband's working the device operates over the broadband and the wall power someone digs up a fiber crashes into a telephone pole and takes down the broadband uh, it switches over to LTE. Worst case scenario, broadband and power go out. 
uh, the device switches over to LTE and uses its internal battery. So with the combination of the two connect connection mediums and the two power sources, we're able to reliably handle moving those what we call FLS or fire life safety lines over and not running the risk of a power outage or a broadband outage taking that life service line down, someone getting stuck in an elevator and broadband's down because the power's out, they're not able to call for help and they're stuck in there. So um, making sure you have a partner that knows how to do this correctly and safely is, is important. And then, you know, last question. I know we're getting to the to the bottom of the hour here. Um, do we offer Yay Link and Panasonic? I think I know the answer, but Clayton? Both. Yep. Awesome. Mark Sonegard, oh, last comments. Uh, no, I think these guys have summed it up. We've got the we've got the track record and we got the tools to do it and make your life a little bit easier in the process. Awesome. Well, Thank you, clients, for joining us here. We wouldn't be here without you. We really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you've got uh, some urgency to give us a call and let's have that conversation. So until next time, thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.